talking about staying power today. And I want us to look at this idea of duct tape and this scotch tape. So I've got a very amazing person who's been assisting me in kids' church. Give it up for Jaden. Jaden is amazing. She's going to help me do this. And I'm going to have um, Evan and Carson. Y'all can kind of tag team. Have y'all ever used this tape? Yeah. What is this tape mostly used for? Wrapping. Wrapping gifts. Like, it's not very strong. Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't do much. But what do you still call it? Tape. tape. It's still tape. Now, I've got this. This is actually Gorilla Tape. But um, it's like duct tape, right? But Gorilla Tape. I don't know what they added extra, but it's just a little bit stronger. Duct tape was actually invented by a woman in the World War, World War I or World War II or something. She was wrapping stuff for the men in the army, and she noticed that it was very difficult for them to open it up, and then the other stuff that she used that was weaker, it would get wet and everything would be ruined. And so she created this, it was actually duck, like a duck, and they changed it to duct. It was actually duct tape because it was resistant to water, the water would just roll off it so it wouldn't ruin the package. But then she came up with this three system. It's like there's a backing, which is this, the sticky part, which is like a resin, but she added this cotton fabric in the middle, and that's where the strength is. Now, duct tape is different than scotch tape, but they're both tape. tape. So I'm going to see, Carson and Evan, I don't know how many of these you're going to need. Probably just use two. How many do we use? Three. You're going to, Jaden, go ahead and step up. You're going to use that tape because it's tape, right? You're going to go ahead and tape up Jaden. So yes, start at the knees and go all the way up. You could do it like a little bit closer if you need to, but then just all the way up to where, Jaden, where do we stop? Just like right underneath her ribs. How many of y'all think that this scotch tape is going to be able to hold Jaden up? No. <laughs> no chance? Caleb thinks it will. I mean, it's tape, right? So let's just see. I really love science experiments. Pastor Charity was always older than me, obviously, and so she did science experiments, and she did, like, so good. Like, she was the best science experimenter. And so when it came my year to do them, guess what I did? I used hers. Yes, I told her to keep the little boards. Do they still even have science fairs? No. Father, forgive them. But, like, the little boards that open up and you do What? Yes, yeah, like, it's like a poster board, and you have the different sides, and you do the hypothesis. Yeah, we need to have a science fair in the co-op, definitely. Okay, we're getting good. Now, what's going to be fun is when we move this, you just kind of have to be their catcher. Carson and, Carson and Evan are pro catchers. Okay, let me show you while they finish this up. Let's go ahead and show them the clip of how not to catch. Okay. This has nothing to do with tape, duct tape, anything. But let's take a look at uh, how not to catch as they finish wrapping her up. Let's take a look at this. Can I get a bottle of water? Sorry. Do we have it? We're getting it. Okay. Thanks, Matt. Cheese. Stay well. Stay well. Confident in all that you call them to walk in from this day. Thank you, Father God, that they walk Have we almost used all three? Okay, all here we go. Hold on, rewind, rewind, rewind. Forward. <laughs> Thank you, Father God. Here we go, ready? I prayed for him. All that you've called them to walk in from this day forward. <laughs> in Jesus' name. In Did y'all hear this the smack? Forward, to walk in from this day forward. All that you've called them to walk in from this day forward. All that you've called them to walk in from this day Where's forward. Where's To walk in from this day forward. To walk in from Bro, this day forward. Bro, that was your forward, brother. To walk in from this day forward. To walk in it was from like this a delayed fall. So, okay, Jaden, you're all taped up. Now, Caleb, what team are you on? Uh, the picture frames. The picture frames. Okay, so if, if Caleb's right, picture frames get 10,000. If they're wrong, guess what? Minus. They lose 10,000. Hey. Hey, when you open your mouth, I'm going to take your word for it. Pastor Charity already hyped you up for being like accountability. Okay. Now, you, you have to just remove... Remove the thing and just let her fall, basically. 
You just let her fall. <laughs> wow. So minus 10,000 for the picture frames. Now, I want to ask y'all, go ahead and get her back up. Let's try with the Gorilla Tape. Here you go, Carson. You're going to need two. I want to ask y'all, why didn't that work? It's not strong. It has the backing. It has the sticky, but it's missing something. And this is how a lot of believers, unfortunately, are. They have the backing, which represents the word. They have a knowledge of the word. They even have the sticky, which is a desire. Go in your Bibles while they wrap her up with that. Matthew 16, 24. Go there really quick. Matthew 16, 24. See, there's a lot of believers that come to church. A lot of you, right? You come to church, you hear the word, and now you're a summer intern. Why is there such a difference in the believers? And obviously, in different ages, youth represents 6th grade to 12th grade. And so there's already a difference in maturity. But y'all, in spiritual things, there's no age limit. Why is there such a difference in spiritual manifestations, spiritual um, strength, spiritual fortitude, going deeper, going higher, being consistent? Why is there such a difference in a group of kids that all hear the same thing, come to church, know the word, are taught the word? Obviously, you come, you have a desire. Like, what's the difference? Right? Like your tape. Why is there some in the youth group represented that are scotch tape? And then there's these others that are duct tape. They're hearing the same word. And it's not even based on like your family. Because there's some solid young people that like have been rejected by their mom, been violated, been, you know, left for nothing, uh, been talked bad about, that are, are consistent that are strong. So it's not about all of these natural things. So what actually is it? See, scotch tape is tape, but it's missing what duct tape has. Duct tape has that fabric in the middle. So these three things, if you're taking notes, there's the resin or the sticky, that's desire. This is what tape is. The resin or like the sticky stuff, that's desire. And then you have the backing, which is knowledge. Those two things, this tape has. But there's something else that duct tape has. Are they hurting you? <laughs> oh, gosh, y'all did it tight. <laughs> wow, Jaden, I apologize. I should have told them. <laughs> You're never moving. Can you breathe? OK. <laughs> wow, good job, guys. Okay. Let's see if she'll stand, if she'll stick. It's tight. Wow. Okay, just leave her for a minute. She's good. She's hanging. Oh, Hannah. Okay, now listen. This, y'all, that's like the same, right? The same length, the same whatever, but something's different. Y'all, the call that God has placed on your life is weighty. Yes. And it's going to require you to move past this just desire or this just knowledge of the word. You have to get that fabric in there. And the fabric that's in the duct tape, what we're talking about today, is discipline. Like, you have to be disciplined. And that's what's so devastating about so many young people is that there's this desire to do something big for God. There's this hunger to do something big for God. And then you come to church and you hear the word. You find out what the word of God says. But when you go home, there's no discipline. And if you don't have personal discipline, and we're going to talk about all month spiritual discipline, natural discipline, relationship discipline. If you don't have discipline, you will not stand. You will quit. Because this scotch tape that doesn't have strength, but is putting on like it can carry the weight, this kind of believer always becomes offended and they become religious. And religion always ends bad. 
Look at the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Remember Jesus said, like you wash, it was in our Bible reading today, you're so focused on washing the outside of the cup, but on the inside you're dirty, you're filthy. So you come to church, you're in the youth group, you come to summer internship, and so it's like you have a desire, I'm here, I'm hearing the word, I know about the word, I know the answers to say, but you never really see the strength, you're never even able to carry the call that God has placed on your life because you're not disciplined. And you will not move past your discipline. God cannot promote you past your own level of discipline. If there's something amazing that God has for your life, he can't just give it to you if you're not disciplined. Your level of discipline right now is letting God know what you can carry, what you can handle, what you will be able to steward. And I know I stand before young people that have a desire to do something for God, that have a desire in these last days to like actually give the devil hell, to let, you know, other kids their age know that like there's nothing out there. There's nothing out there, but the Father and His love has everything for them. I know I stand before young people that want that, but your desire is not going to get it done. You even hearing me preach and all the amazing ministers preach over this next month, it's not going to get it done for you. Discipline is what does it. Y'all, that duct tape is holding Jaden out. She wants, to, uh, she wants to throw up right now. She's about to throw up. You have to pee? Your calves are burning. We're about to take you down in just a minute. Matthew, are y'all there? Matthew 16, 24. And then we'll, we'll get her down so her calves can heal. <laughs> Matthew 16, 24. That's not what I want. Mm, I hate when I write down the wrong verse. Is it Mark? Oh, those who follow me must take up their cross. Oh, is that right? I just didn't read far enough. <laughs> okay. Um, no. Oh, I was on 1616. 16. <laughs> I apologize. I'm trying to hurry, and then Jaden's up there. I apologize. If any man will come after me, if you have your Bible, I would circle come after me. That's the desire. That's the first part. Y'all, people have to want this. People have to want this. And I want to encourage you, if you're like, my mom made me be here, well, just change your desires. Begin telling yourself, I want what God wants for me, and that's it. I want what God wants for me, and that's it. Not I want this, and I want that, and I want that. I want what God wants for me. You have to begin to cultivate that desire, because that's going to enable you to stick. Like, you need all three parts. He says, if anyone will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross, and then what? Follow me. So denying and taking up cross, what are those two? You can circle both of those and then out to the side. That's discipline. Discipline means this. If you're taking notes, you can write this down. Order or self-control. If I'm going to really stick with God, where is the staying power? Where is the staying power? First, you have to have a desire. You have to know God. You have to know his word. But the Bible even says knowledge alone puffs up. It could just make you conceited and make you think you're awesome because you know something, but behind closed doors, you're not putting anything into practice. Knowledge puffs up. A desire can create some initial momentum, but if it's not backed with discipline and the word, It'll fizzle out. How many of y'all have been really excited about something and then five minutes in, you're like, I'm over it? Yeah. The desire got you going, but then it was like, there has to be discipline because God is a God of order. And order, discipline, is order and self-control. This is how I have to live my life. Y'all, if you want to carry the weight of your call, and your call is weighty. Jaden is not weighty, but that duct tape is holding her up. It's doing way better than that scotch tape. That scotch tape could not handle her. Put her up again, let me see. <laughs> okay, let's get her down, fellas. Give it up for Jaden, she's awesome. You're probably gonna have to pick her. Yeah, she can't bend her knees. So it's like, this is what I did. I wrapped my arms around her, oh, you got them? Just cut it. Just Oh, yeah. There we go. Hurry. Yeah, just make sure she doesn't fall, Evan. Carson's got it. Good job. Freedom! Freedom! 
All right, give it up for Jaden. She's awesome. Now, the only reason why she was able to stay there was because that duct tape had that extra fabric. Scotch tape wouldn't do it. We cannot be scotch tape believers in these last days. We have to determine that we are going to be disciplined. Do you remember the story of Mary whenever Mary was at the water well or whatever she was doing? Not Mary at the water well. The oh, Was that her name Mary too? Yes. All these Marys. Okay, like they need to get different names. You know what I mean? Back then, now we have all these names. Like we should have got like Shaquisha. They didn't have any of those names back then. What is yours? Sierra, where's Sierra? Sierra, what is it? Say the whole thing, that long one. Yeah, see, all those names. They just had like Mary, Mark, Luke, whatever. So Mary, I'm talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus. So when Mary was out whatever, she was already betrothed or engaged to be married to Joseph. The angel of the Lord came to her and said, you have found favor with God. Why was Mary able to carry such a heavy call? Because she lived her life disciplined. Why was Joseph the one? Y'all, there was a lot of young girls then. And there was a lot of young men. Why was it Mary and Joseph? Mary was literally chosen to carry Jesus. You are chosen to carry the call that's on your life. Joseph was chosen to steward Jesus. If you don't have discipline, you will not be able to carry or steward the call that God has placed on your life. It requires discipline. What is discipline? Discipline is staying in order and doing the right thing. If you are not disciplined in front of people, outside of people, with different people, if you don't live a disciplined life, you will not complete the call that's on your life. You can be prophesied over. You can be called out. You can have like a, a, the joy of the Lord. You can have all of these moments. But if you are not disciplined, those moments will just remain moments. Things that you go back to. Oh, well, I remember when so-and-so, they called me out. Or when so-and-so said this. What are you actually doing with that? Because God cannot move through you past your level of discipline. If you are not disciplined in the word, disciplined in the private moments of your life, your desire and knowledge of the word will not carry you. You have to be disciplined. So what made it up to that point in Mary's life where she was chosen? Well, she was disciplined in her relationships. Obviously, she was a virgin. And she wasn't out giving Joseph head or cutting all the corners to say she was still a virgin. Y'all, she was very disciplined. See, if you want to do the call that God has for your life only, do you understand that no one can do the call that you have been called to? And if you want to do it, it's going to require discipline and not cutting corners and not trying to like flirt with the line. It's going to require a hard stand that says, God, I have a desire. I know you love me. I know you have a plan for me. I believe that Jesus died for me. And so I'm going to live my life in a way that's disciplined according to the word of God. So that call can actually come to pass in the lives that I'm attached to, that I'm called to spiritually change lives. I'm called to alter that it actually happens. It actually gets done. But see, the desire is not just going to get you there. You'll fizzle, you'll fizzle out. And y'all, I declare by faith that each of you will not fizzle out. The statistics that they say, you know, the 20%, even what the Bible says, 20% will stick, stick with it and the rest will not. I declare by faith that all of you will stick with it. But it's up to you. Y'all, your pastors can't do it for you. Look what it says. Paul wrote this in, um, let me see where it is. Mm, 2 Thessalonians 3, 6. It's from the Passion. I think I typed it out. Your pastors can't do it for you. It's your discipline. Say, it's my discipline. Y'all, you going somewhere else and hearing another... Pa well, if I just... If I have Pastor Jonathan's ministry, if I have Pastor so-and-so's ministry, if I had so-and-so's ministry... No, 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 no. No, 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 no. 
Do you know whose ministry you need? You need the ministry of discipline. Because the word is the same wherever. I mean, if you're going to a word of faith, spirit filled church, like the word is the word. What's going to make the difference in your life is you being disciplined. Because you can have the desire, you can have the knowledge, but if you're not personally disciplined, it's not going to do it. And a pastor can't do it for you. He said this, and now dear brothers and sisters, we give you this command in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Stay away from all believers. Say all believers. Who live idle lives and don't follow the tradition or the teaching they receive from us. Why? Why do I need to stay away from those believers? Why do I not need to be one of those believers? Because those believers aren't disciplined. They're in it. They're about it. They'll show up. But y'all, your serving isn't going to do it for you. Do you understand that? We're called to serve. That's what the Bible says. Your church attendance isn't going to do it for you. That's amazing to come to church because the word says, do not forsake it. And faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. Your desire to be something great. Oh, I desire to be something great. Do you know there was a lot of young girls in, in the time when Jesus, when God was like, okay, who's going to be the one that carries my son? There was probably a lot of girls. Well, what made Mary stand out? She was disciplined. How do I know she was disciplined? Because she was a virgin. The angel said, you found favor. And then whenever, as Jesus was growing up, we see that Mary and Joseph would constantly go to the temple. So I know she was disciplined. She lived a disciplined life. And it requires discipline to carry and steward the call that's on your life. Your desire is not going to get it done. Do you need to have a desire? Yes. You need to have a desire for him. And if you don't have a desire right now, I would encourage you, confess every single day. I want only what he wants. I want what he wants. I want his things. I want his plan for my life. I don't want anything except for what he wants for me. And then as that desire begins to cultivate, you begin to have disciplines that you embrace. Reading the word every day. Having boundaries in relationships. Not trying to push the line. Y'all, we are believers. We are carriers of the presence of God. And y'all, this isn't going to get it done. This isn't what the world needs. Some cheap imitation of who God is. The world needs something strong. Well, who's going to do it? It has to be us. And your pastors can't do it for you. They can encourage you. They can build you up. They can give you a daily Bible reading to read. They can have or nights and every night you can have something to do, which we do. Messages for you to listen to. But y'all, that's not going to get it done for you. How many believers have been in this house and they didn't stick? Well, why didn't they stick? Because of offense and because of religion. And the only way you become offended is whenever you, you don't have that strength. You don't have personal discipline. Yeah. Now, because when you're disciplined, you don't have a twisted, perverted view of your pastors. Yeah. When you're disciplined, you don't have a twisted, perverted view of the word that goes out, of the, out from the house that you're called to. Yeah. When you're disciplined, yeah. Yeah. your pastors can't do it for you. Do you understand? Your pastors can't do it for you. Who else can't do it for you? Knowing the word won't make you strong. Yeah. You know how I know that? Because the devil knows the word. 1 Corinthians 8, 1, it says this, Now concerning things offered to idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs up. Y'all, there's a lot of people that know stuff, but that doesn't do anything. You have to do it. And that requires discipline. If you're not disciplined, you cannot carry and you will not steward the call that's on your life. You cannot do it outside of your personal discipline. You can be under the anointing. You can be under the fire. You can be under the word. But if you're not personally disciplined to take what you hear and actually make changes in your life, you will be in the same place. And you'll find yourself like a lot of believers going from movement to movement, from meeting to meeting, just trying to get a little feel good or a little pick me up to make up for their unwillingness to just apply the word they already heard. And God will never move through you if you're not disciplined. The level you're disciplined in right now, disciplined in your time with him, disciplined in your um, self-control, putting the flesh under, that's your cap. That's your cap. Because how do I know that Mary was disciplined? Because God said, I choose you. I choose you. Well, I, I'm not a virgin anymore. Well, God will restore you, but I'm talking about from now on. What are you going to do? Are you going to keep being a scotch tape believer? Or are you going to say, you know what? Like what Jesus did for me actually matters to me. It's actually weighty to me. 
And I'm not just going to sit around and show up to church and, and put on a front, like make my leaders think I'm good, but behind closed doors. Do you think Mary was like writing Joseph like secret notes in the Bible at the temple? I mean, he didn't have the Bible app, but you know what I'm saying? Do you think that? Do you think above the door he was like making secret messages, carving secret messages, and then going to her house and looking at her secret message? Because they didn't have Apple Music. <laughs> I'm just saying, if y'all gonna do it, it's automatic material for me. Do you think he was getting on, on, on the game, like going outside, playing rocks, and like shouting out, yo girl, you wanna play? You wanna play rocks? And then started talking about all kinds of stuff. Do you like me? Do you have feelings for me? <laughs> While they were playing soccer? Now it's video games. It's in your headset, you're in your room. Your mom can't hear you. But you can have these secret conversations. <laughs> Y'all, do you understand how valuable you are? Do you understand how precious your life is? Like we don't just say like it's not the season just to say it's not the season. We say that because God is a God of order. Yeah. And y'all, I could bring up so many young people that wish to God when they were in one of those seats, they would have drawn a line in the sand and said, you know what, I might have done it before, but I'm not going to do it anymore. Yeah. I might have been fake and pushed the line before, but I'm not going to do it anymore. Because now they're having to fight things that they were never created to fight in their heart and in their mind. They're having to overcome shame and things that they never had to fight. They heard the word. They heard the truth. They knew about God. They knew. They had a desire. But y'all, that won't get it done. You have to be disciplined. Why was Mary, like Mary was called. She was the one that was chosen to carry Jesus. Mary was the one. Joseph was the man that was called to steward the Son of God and to raise him. And he did a dang good job. For 30 years, he stuck with him. He did the very best he knew how to do. All he knew how to do was to take him to church and to teach him how to build. And he just did it. And Jesus grew up, and then he let him go into whatever ministry he was going to do. Well, why? Why were they the ones chosen? Because they were like super special? No, because they were disciplined. They were disciplined. Y'all, you want to decide today. Yeah. You know, even in, in years past or, or in months past, summer internships past, like I was casual with my Bible reading, you know, with the books and the small groups. Like, just be disciplined. One day at a time, decide, like, I'm just going to be all in. Yeah. Because if I want to carry the call, if I want to steward what God has for me, if I want to be like weighty, I don't have any more duct tape. If I want to be, do we have any, like, any of the duct tape? I'll just hold it. You are awesome, Malia. Thank you. Thank you. This is Craftzilla. Wow, this is kind of ghetto. Oh, gosh, that's okay. If I want to be strong, y'all, duct tape, it just, it's different. It's tape. And y'all, each of us, we choose. Okay, God is so faithful, and he loves you, and he's going to encourage you every time you're at church, every time you're under the word, you're going to be encouraged to go to another level. But at the end of the day, you choose. You choose what you listen to. You choose how you're disciplined at home with what you watch, how you're talking, who you're talking to, the lines that you're pushing, the disobedience, the disrespect to your parents. Y'all, it's all together. All of you is you. You can't compartmentalize. You just have to decide in every area of my life, I'm going to be disciplined. One day at a, at a time, I'm going to be disciplined to obey. I'm going to be disciplined to honor God and to spend time with him every day. Because y'all, your desire is not going to get it done. I can't say that enough. Because I don't want you to come in here thinking, well, I'm a summer intern shirt. I'm a summer internship. I got the shirt. I'm, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm showing up. I'm serving. You know, I, I'm, I'm someone special. You are special. Yeah. But you won't carry the call if you're not disciplined. You have to go out of those doors. And before you do anything else, say, God, okay, what do I need to do? What adjustment do I need to make? Three things really fast. Write them down. And then I'm going to lay hands on all of you. Because I believe that there's an impartation and even a gift to be stirred up on the inside of you. According to 2 Timothy 1.6, he 
said, don't forget to stir up the gift that you received when I laid hands on you. So I believe there's going to be an impartation, a zeal, a fire that gets fueled up or refueled on the inside of you that's going to propel you into a month and a year and a couple years and even the next season of your life outside of high school to just do what you've been called to do and carry what you've been called to carry and steward what you've been called to steward. Just disciplined, just like a grit. Like I have a desire for him and I'm disciplined. When no one's looking, when there's no gold stars to be passed out, when no pastors are around, when it's just me and call of duty, I'm disciplined. Uh, she a hoe, I ain't talking to her. Or that gets me in trouble, I'm not doing that. Do you understand? Like you just be disciplined in every moment of your life. Three things. What does discipline look like? Number one, doing the right thing when no one is looking. Just write these verses down. Colossians 2.5 says this, For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order. Order. God is a God of order. And the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Y'all, you have to be disciplined with what you're called to do right now. Okay? Like, none of y'all are going to the nations tomorrow. You know why? You're signed up for summer internship. You're coming to summer internship tomorrow. So you got to be disciplined in what's in your hand right now. If you're not disciplined in what's in your hand right now, y'all, God cannot move through you past your discipline. So you can show up all day, but if you're not disciplined in what you're doing, like God is not going to say, okay, you're ready for the nations. Your bed is mess and your closet's a trash. Trash. Do you know what you're ready for? To clean your room and to clean your closet. Do you understand? Like you have to be disciplined. Do the right thing when no one's looking. Number two, do the right thing when you don't want to. Well, it's just like easy for you because you're like a pastor. It's just easy for them because like their parents are both at home. You're going to continue to make excuses for your life and you will just stay scotch tape. And y'all, scotch tape, like someone that's not disciplined always gets offended. Yeah. I'm just saying, you won't be here for long. Yeah. You're a short timer. Yeah. How long did that tape hold her up? It was like that. That's what you become when you're not disciplined and you make excuses for why you're not disciplined. Y'all, there's a lot of people, okay? There's a lot of people that don't have both parents. There's a lot of people that have been violated. Does that make it right? Does that make your story like I'm trying to be callous? No, I hate that that happened. I hate that that happened. But gosh, don't you hate that the devil's still trying to use it to get you to slow down and to feel sorry for yourself and be, and be a victim? Like God has so much for you. And because of Jesus, he made a way for you to move past all of that mess and actually carry something valuable, which is his call for your life that no one else can do. And y'all, I believe that y'all want to. Like I believe with everything in me, even when y'all were coming in and you were like, what is this camping survival thing? Just like Pastor Charity said, and it's like, what is this video? Mario, you were hype. And I just really appreciate you being aware of all the effort that went into that. It was like, Mario was like, yeah. Like, he was so excited, because it's like, he knew, like, this was not just like one and done. Like, this took a lot of time or whatever. But I know that y'all have a desire to honor God with your life. I know that you know the word, because Pastor Charity brings it, hey. Yeah. All the time. She brings the word. You know the word. But I believe that this month, you're going to begin to step out of this scotch tape strength and really begin to carry what God's called you to carry to the kids around you, to your families, to the kids that are looking up to you. Y'all, that requires discipline. So you have to do the right thing even when you don't want to. Galatians 2.20 says this, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live. Begin to tell yourself, I live by faith in the Son of God. What does the Bible say? I walk by faith and not by sight. My senses don't run me. I am a person of order because God is a God of order. So if he didn't tell me to do it, I'm not doing it. I do the right thing even if my flesh doesn't want to. What did Pastor Kathy teach us? Down flesh. Like I crucify the flesh. Number three, I do the right thing when others do the wrong thing. I'm not swayed. I'm a person of discipline. When you're disciplined, you're able to carry and steward the call that's on your life. When you're disciplined. The desire and the knowledge, you know, that will, that will get you through. And, and some people might, might think that you're awesome because you show up and you have a Bible. But y'all, eventually you know. 
Because Scotch tape believers, they're short timers. They're right back in the same sin. They're right back in the same toxic relationship. They're right back in the same awful things that the love of Jesus had pulled them out of. They find themselves right back. Well, why is that? They're hearing the same word. Y'all, the same word, the same anointing is going. Why did Judas betray Jesus? This isn't like new. He wasn't disciplined. He wasn't disciplined in his thoughts, right? He continued to have greed. He wanted money. He was not disciplined in his attitude towards Jesus. He wanted them to do that a whole nother way, to overthrow and, and to get all violent and overthrow the government and take charge. He wasn't disciplined. I have to be disciplined in my thoughts. I have to be disciplined in my actions if I'm going to really carry what God wants me to carry. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to, if you're, if you're ready, like you have a desire and you're like, I, I want this month and moving into even this next year, this next season, I want there to be a drastic change. And I'm coming up to say, I will be disciplined. Maybe you're already disciplined and that's awesome. It's like, I just want a little bit of gas on the fire. Or maybe you're like, I don't even have a fire. I need a fire. I need the fire. So you're going to, whatever you need, the Holy Spirit is going to give it to you in these next few moments. If you're saying like, I want a greater level of discipline in my life and I'm committing to do what I need to do. Now remember, the laying on of hands gives you the moment to receive, but you still have to be disciplined to do something with it. If you fall out or if you're standing up here, you listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. That's why you come up. You receive. The Bible says the laying on of hands, an impartation happens. And then you don't just and go back to your seat. No, you're receiving. You're getting a download from heaven in that moment. The impartation comes and then the Holy Spirit begins to speak to you and tell you, okay, this is what you need to adjust. This is what you need to change. This is a conversation you need to have, whatever it is. Because y'all, you will not do it. You will not do it. Do you understand? You will not do it outside of discipline. You will not do it. And it's not that Zechariah 4, 6 says, it's not in my might, it's not in my power, but by his spirit. But you have to be disciplined in living by the Spirit. It requires discipline. Not just your own will. Oh, I'm going to do it. No, that will fade. But the Spirit never fades. So if you're ready, you want to do it, we're going to do be with you. I'm going to have you come up. The the guys will show you where to stand because we're not all going to fit up here. But if you're like, I want, I want... I want to be hands to be laid on me. I want to make a commitment to be disciplined or go to another level in my discipline. I want you to come down front and the leaders are going to show you exactly where to stand. And we're going to begin. I'm going to lay hands on you.